Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and this video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. We have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we're going to talk about Zaporozhye direction. Uh, the area is very interesting. According to information we have during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians conducted a series of counter-attacks in this direction. The Russians are saying that Ukrainians were attacking the Russian positions and the Russian forces with the purpose to restore control over the territories they lost during the previous days. But as I understand, the Ukrainians were attacking along this direction just with one purpose, to capture some Russian soldiers to force them to surrender, because the Ukrainians on Zaporozhye direction have just one question. Whether the Russians are planning to conduct the full-scale offensive operations towards Stakhmak and towards Arekhov itself or not. And to understand this and to receive answer to this question, the Ukrainians uh, conducted a series of counter-attacks along the line of combat contact with the purpose to capture the Russian soldiers and just to get this information for them. What exactly do they know? The number of forces, any commanders, any rumors, any things that they know that may help the Ukrainians to understand whether the Russians are planning to use the 90,000 uh, group of forces that they have accumulated in the Zaporozhye direction in the very near future. Now let's move further. And first we're going to talk about South Donetsk direction. We have additional updates according to uh, different mappers, according to pro-Ukrainian mappers. The Russians during the previous 24 hours managed to improve their positions along the road between Salotka and Vadiana and to capture just additional positions. So the Russians are moving closer and closer to the coal mines, uh, to the road T0524 and we see that for now the Ukrainians still haven't managed to stabilize the situation and to slow down the Russians. According to information we have, pro-neutral mappers have uh, confirmed additional Russian progress uh, in the southern part of Konstantinovka. This is another evidence that most likely there are very heavy clashes already on the territory of the eastern and the southeastern of Konstantinovka, but yet we haven't received any geolocations that can confirm this. Now let's move further and we are going to talk about Krasnogorov as you can see we have a lot of icons the most important is that according to information we have from different mappers pro-russian mappers neutral mappers and pro-ukrainian mappers the russians established control over around 95 slash 99 percent of uh, krasnogorovka the part of krasnogor the main part of krasnogorovka let's talk let's call it like this the russians have no control over Shmita street that located on the ukrainian side of lazova river and the russians have no control in the western uh, the residential area we are talking about the city so the main the borders of the city so uh, uh, most likely during the next uh, 24 hours, during the upcoming day, the Russians will secure this area completely and they will force the Ukrainians to fall back from the main part of Citadel. But uh, the Russians during the previous days faced one big problem from the Ukra that the Ukrainians created. The thing is that uh, the Ukrainians as well as the Russians see everything that is happening inside of Krasnogorovka. And the Ukrainians began using the distance mining method because the Russians are using the same roads to redeploy forces from the southern part to the northern part. Maybe there are still some sabotage and reconnaissance group of armed forces of Ukraine, who knows, but the thing is that the Ukrainians start mining the main roads in, in Krasnogorovka massively and the Russians start losing their armored vehicles significantly. So this is the first episode, the Russian armored vehicle was moving from the south and when the Russians turned to the right, to the right, in the eastern direction, the Russian armored vehicle got on the mine and was destroyed here. The mine was established by the Ukrainians. Maybe some sabotage group of armored forces of Ukraine or maybe even some drone, uh, let's say, came to this area and dropped the mine and the Russians got, in the, got there and was destroyed. Who knows? But this is not the only episode during the previous 24 hours. For example, in this video we can see another full-scale Russian offensive operation with a significant number of armored vehicles, tank, tanks, personnel, carriers that were heading probably to finalize the battle for Krasnogorovka but once again using the distance method of mining the Ukrainians established another mine and when tank entered the area the tank was destroyed. 
this unexpected mining forced the Russians to stop, forced the Russians to slow down and to regroup because it's very difficult to continue offensive without a turtle tank. So once again, the Russians in this case were moving along um, Gelagishna Street and that when they entered this intersection of roads, one of the Russian tank got the mine, filled and was destroyed. Now the Russians can't be 400% sure that the area is completely secured. They need to send some additional engineering forces with the purpose to clear the territory and after that the russians would be able to continue of course nobody wants to lose uh, tanks and armored vehicles without even having a combat or battle so this is the situation the ukrainians show some resistance but mainly using distance mining method and it's also also very 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 let's say successful and very interesting approach now let's move further let's talk about pakrov's direction we received significant progress of the armed force of russian federation for the previous nights of the local time according to information we have the russians improved their positions further in the western direction and captured additional tree line uh, on the ukrainian side of Vovcha river there are a few strongholds of armored forces of ukraine but i'm not sure that ukrainians are going to hold these positions for a very long time currently the main value uh, the ukrainians uh, try to keep their positions in skushna and mizhova but as soon as the russians are able to get uh, here very close most likely the ukrainians Will be, will be forced to fall back. The Russians also improved their positions uh, in direction in the southwestern direction of Novoselovka Persia. According to different mappers, the Russians have already captured the farms and the barracks that located in the southwestern direction, and the Russians are moving further in direction of Mizhova. Now let's talk about Pakrovsk itself. During the previous 24 hours, the Russians improved their positions significantly. And if yesterday we were trying to calculate the distance between edge Russian positions and Zhelena itself and the distance was plus minus from one till two kilometers from different direction of according to different calculations so today on the 27th of July we can make a conclusion and we can make a statement that the Russians entered Zhelena from the area of the cemetery so this is the cemetery the Russians reached the uh, let's say the final point of the history line and most likely tomorrow the map will be adjusted once again and Ukrainians will show additional or the first positions of the Russians inside of the village itself. So summarizing everything, additional 2-3 kilometers the Russians managed to bypass during the previous 12 hours and to answer Zhelena from this direction. Other Russian sources moved further in the northwestern direction and uh, managed to semi-encircle Vesola from the southwest. Other Russian sources blocked the Ukrainians in the same village from the uh, from the east uh, and so on. So, as you can see, summarizing everything, we can make the following conclusion: the battle for Vesola has already started, and most likely tomorrow or the day after, we're going to receive first updates, maybe even videos with the Russian flags from the same from the. Village village itself. This village will fall very soon. Furthermore, we see that the Russians entered Zhelena and according to my understanding of the situation, during the next uh, 24 hours, the Russians will try to improve their positions along this true line. This will allow them to short the line of combat contact and the most important, this offensive, this progress will allow the Russians to establish complete fire control over the uh, supply road of 542 and the Ukrainian stronghold that located between Novoselovka, Pyrsh and Zhlana, we are talking about this area, and this will force the Ukrainians to fall back due to um, high risk of being encircled or suffering losses, and then the Russians will cross Vovchi River from this direction as well, and they will begin attack and offensive on Ukrainian positions from this area to Kamushivka, Mizhovo, Novozhelana, so this might bring significant problems for the Ukrainians. Anyway, Zhlana is a very important city. This is very important village or city or whatever the thing is that the russians need to move further in the western direction the russians need to maintain their logistic they need to improve logistic and they need to connect jelana itself with avdievka if the russians are able to do this then they will be able to begin uh, to um, let's say intensify their logistic to improve their logistic positions and to begin concentration and accumulation of the forces before further movements to pakrovsk most likely according According to the situation, Parakrovsk 
Kiyevka is the really primary target for the Russians. Now let's talk about New York Taryetsk. During the previous 24 hours we haven't received anything, just a short video of how the Russians were bombing and attacking the Taryetsk citadel. According to information we have during the previous night, there were no changes on the ground, no movements either from the Russian or from the Ukrainian side. Now let's talk about Solidar. We have a lot of very interesting details according to different mappers, pro-Russian and neutral mappers. The Russians during the previous night, maybe during the previous days, managed to improve their positions to the northwest of Zalizne, Zaliznyanskaya. So this territory was captured by the Russians and obviously this is significant progress, significant results just uh, for one, two days of clashes. Somehow the Ukrainians missed this attack and they were forced to fall back. Of course, uh, to take under control these fields is not, uh, these, these fields are, is not the main target of the Russians. Of course, they need to move further and most likely the Russians are planning to repeat uh, um, um, Lysychansk, Severodonetsk, uh, let's say in circle operation so most likely the next things that the Russians are going to do they will try to capture additional true lines in this area and to get as close as possible to the village of to the villages of Vandarne, uh, Hromovka and Vasyukovka so if the Russians are able to take under control these additional positions towards Vasyukovka river this will allow them to establish complete fire control over the main supply road over the main roads that goes from Slavyansk to Vasyukovka Kafka to this area. But this is also not the most important target. The most important target, the most important thing that the Russians are planning to do is to get as close as possible to this supply road that goes from Siversk uh, towards uh, Slavyansk. This is one of the most important roads that Ukrainians are using for supporting their forces here and to get as close as possible to this road as well that goes also from Siversk to the west in direction of Slavyansk and in direction of Liman. To do this, the Russians first of all need to capture all these villages like Vasyukovka, Hromovka, Bandarne, Pazhena and if the Russians are able to get this line then we can start uh, talking about uh, some fire or artillery control over the main supply roads and this is going to be something like operational encirclement of armed forces of Ukraine inside of the Siversk. The distance from uh, these possible Russian positions towards the main supply road is around six kilometers and it's already now uh, when talking about operational encirclement and losses uh, and uh, let's say uh, to deal significant losses to the Ukrainians. So most likely this is exactly what the Russians are planning to do and if it's true, if this information is correct, if this projection is correct, then we can make a conclusion that today on the 27th of July the Russians began real full-scale official serious encirclement operation. So let's wait what is going to be next but obviously this is very interesting. As for Kupin's direction, we have just a regular Russian FPV drone art activity, artillery activity. The most important things are coming from north in Kupin's direction. Just yesterday we talked that the Russians improved their positions towards this stronghold. This area was captured by the Russians during the previous 48 hours and during the previous night some mappers adjusted their maps and shown additional progress of the Russians towards Tabayevka. So everything as we discussed in the previous video in the previous updates, the Russians are trying to cut this small salient, this artillery pocket between the Rakate N26 intersection of N26 and the railways and the Pishana itself. So there are lots of strongholds, lots of Ukrainian positions, and the Russians are trying just to defeat the Ukrainians here and to take under control everything to the right of this white line. Now let's move to Kharkiv area. We haven't received anything special, just a regular activity. The only important thing that I would like to discuss with you is that the Russians continue bombing, continue attacking and suppressing the Ukrainian positions along Zernovaya Street. The Ukrainians understood, according to the Russians, that the Ukrainians realized that the Russians are about to begin offensive from aggregate plants towards uh, this residential part and that the Russians are planning using this attack to encircle the Ukrainians completely 
completely in the citadel and to prevent this and not to allow the Russians to do this, the Ukrainians intensified their attempts to send additional reinforcements and reserves to the citadel with the purpose to hold the foothold, to hold the bridgehead and not to allow the Russian plans to come through. So this is the situation and we we're gonna see what is going to be next. As for Lipsy direction, nothing special, nothing interesting happened. Uh, the Ukrainians continue attacking the territory of Russian Federation. During the previous night, we got additional few videos of consequences of Russian of Ukrainian drone strikes on the Russian oil refineries and Russian airfields. Furthermore, we have report that the Russians lost another Su-34 during the training flight uh, somewhere in the vicinity of uh, the city by the name of uh, Krasnoyarsky. Also, we have report that one of Ukrainian drone was flying to attack. Uh, the airfield in the vicinity of the city Angelis. The Russians are using these airfields for uh, strategical um, aircraft to attack Ukraine with uh, different cruise missiles. In this video we can see the Ukrainian drone who was uh, heading to attack Russian aircrafts on the Angelis airfield but as a result of air defense uh, the Russians managed to destroy the drone and they managed to secure the area. So currently this is a very big problem for Russia you know, sometimes people are saying the big territory of Russia is the big Russian benefit, big Russian uh, plus, but uh, as uh, for war with Ukraine, we see that the Russian big territory means a lot of problem and uh, it, requ it requires significant number of air defense because now the Russians, the Ukrainians still don't have enough of powerful drones, enough of powerful missiles to attack Russian airfields, energy facilities, but they can do this just with small drones, but even though the Ukrainians use using low power small drones and small missiles are able to deal some damage to Russia. We see that the Russians uh, can't uh, stabilize the situation, at least in this sphere. And we continue receiving more and more updates about Ukrainian resistance, uh, the resistance on the territory of Ukraine, more and more military cars of uh, military officers, recruiters, were destroyed during the previous night. Of course, it's not something like full scale, full over Ukraine, but small episodes, but anyway, uh, very big trip always starts from very small steps and the most important update also is coming from Mali probably this is the the most important piece of news during the previous night uh, during uh, the uh, previous nights uh, the Wagner convoy was ambushed by some resistance by the local uh, guerrilla forces in Mali and significant number of Wagner forces of uh, government forces of Mali were destroyed as a result of ambush the sources are saying that information to these forces was provided by the Western satellites Western intelligence and that that obviously significant losses furthermore the sources are saying that the uh, the commander Lotus who was in charge of storm of Stalidar and Bakhmut uh, was killed also as a result of this ambush so uh, this is very very critical situation uh, we I believe you've seen already the video of casualties and losses that the Russians suffered in this area we will not watch this video due to significant number of casualties once again and that's it for the short video military summary channel reminds we can any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes join my patreon and have a good day bye bye